Firstly boxing out of the red corner, standing with his head trainer, John Pegg. Officially on the scales, at 11 stone, four pounds, six ounces. 29 victories, 18 finishing inside the distance and 70 feet on his record. He's wearing the green and white shorts and stands in the ring this evening as a former British Commonwealth and EBU European welterweight champion, former WBC international welterweight champion and former IBF international super welterweight champion. Boxing out of Birmingham, England, introducing the savage Sam Eggington. And across the ring, standing in the blue corner with his head trainer, Arturo Mendiola. Officially on the scales at 11 stone, 5 pounds, 4 ounces. 37 career victories, with 12 going inside the distance. He has 11 defeats on his record. Wearing black and white this evening. And a former IBF Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Boxing out of Chicago, Illinois, USA, via his native Mexico, introducing King Carlos Molina. <laughs> Referee Ian John Lewis will now issue his final instructions to both boxers. Well, for Sam Eggington, this is all about the next step. It's about keeping that dream going. Already a storied career, one of controversy, one of feeling hard done to by judges, one of real success and disappointments along the way. But tonight, he wants Molina's world ranking, and Molina already on the back foot, too good. Right hands from Eggington, and then one to the body as well. Yeah, the first one was the one that did the damage there, really, for Molina. He felt that one, soon went on that back foot again. You've got to remember, Molina hasn't been stopped. In, he's had 50 contests, he's never been stopped, he's tough. So this will more than likely go 12 rounds, Dave. So what Eggington's got to do here, get behind his jab, get the points on the board, so to speak, work behind the jab, and generally then gradually get into the contest. But work behind that lead hand, you're in against a tough, tough guy. You've got to wear him down and do it behind that lead hand. All action so far from Eddington as we would expect. Never too circumspect. It was extraordinary after that Ashley Theophane fight to see that one of the judges had that fight level when it was stopped. And Eggington thinks that's a narrative about his career that he's hard done to by judges time and again. Of course, notably recently in that Ted Cheeseman fight, he certainly felt that he won it. Molina showing early signs that he prefers that, that bent arm work, more mid-range. I think Egerton, he starts throwing that long straight jab, look there's an example of it there. And Molina just struggles then to close that gap down and Egerton's just keeping him at bay. You stand toe to toe with these Mexican type boxers, that's what they like. They're tough, they're strong, they're big mid-range fighters who like the bent arm work. So just keep it long and just gradually get into it. He won his IDF world title at Super Welter. <laughs> Carlos Molina against Isha Smith on the... Canelo Alvarez, Floyd Mayweather undercard. Essentially lost the belt against Cornelius Bundridge. That fighter had that incredible run. One of the 41 years of age, Bundridge against Molina. 
13 month reign as champion. It all came nine years ago, of course, and glory days seemingly well behind him. Recently rebuilt at a lower level to try and get himself into positions like this. Good left hand there from Eggington, and then followed by a right hand over the top. Great finish to the opening round. Good work from Egerton in this round. Lovely right hand there. And again there, sharp, short right hand. For most of this round, then Egerton had Moline on that back foot. Good left hook. Good switch of attack there. Went downstairs with two shots and then finished with the head shots. Just there's the basic jab, keeping your man off balance. Scoring well. <laughs> Dollars ten seconds. Seconds out. Round two. He's had great success already in his career. Sam Eggington, Commonwealth title against Joseph Lamptey back in May 2015. British title against Glenn Foot, which he defended against Dale Evans, then lost it to Bradley Ski. In early 2016, there was a sense from some critics that he was on the brink of becoming an opponent, a gatekeeper type, but John Pegg has always said Sam Eggington is better than that. And I suppose it's this fight and then what's to come, should he win it, that will uh, show what he has left, at, what he has left at that world level, maybe. He's experienced and more seasoned now. Sam Eggington is improving with every contest. Start of this round here, some good jabs going in from him. Got to box clever against this guy, got to keep it mid to long. Again, Molina preferring that short and mid-range work. So you just got to measure that gap and distance behind that jab. Keep the punches nice and straight. And frustrate Molina, that's what Eggington's got to do. Make him come forward and bring him on to punches. But you certainly don't want to be standing and trading because this guy is strong. <laughs> Super so shot, love, yeah, that was a great punch. European title, I should say, as well, against Severino Rodriguez. Lost that to Mohamed Mamou, man. There's always been that sense that just when he's ready to take that next step, something goes wrong. Either he makes a mistake or he doesn't quite get the decision he wanted. That shot defeat by... Hassan Joaquinho cost him probably a fight with Brandon Rios. And his story so far is littered with uh, little moments like that. Molina now just trying to counter punch on the front foot, keeping the hands really low, so trying to draw the lead off Eggington. And then he'll come back with the counters. That's it from Eggington, that simple jab, the basic punch, so effective, scores the points, keeps the, the opponents off balance, breaks him down. But he does have that huge experience, Molina, 401 professional rounds before this, and he's using all of it here. He's having a little bit of success in this second round as yeah, well. A couple of good left hooks there from Molina. Eggington just, just switching off slightly and just walking onto those shots and just leaning forward, probably a little bit too much and Molina's picked up on it, a couple of good left hooks. Arturo Mendiola in that Carlos Molina corner. Some good work here from Molina, Dave. Nice one-two left hook combination. Higginson come back with his own shot, but then just gets caught there with that right hand. Better round for Molina, I thought. Could be one apiece. Hard to argue with that.
Eggington says of Molina that he thinks he could easily make light middle way and doesn't work hard enough and Look fleshy certainly Molina on the uh, the way into the ring but we've seen his class certainly in that second round. Molina's performance in that second round just makes this more intriguing going forward. He set some uh, challenges there for Eggington and as Richie said, probably nicked the round and probably makes it 1-1 after two. Good right hand there from Eggington. I thought in that last round also Molina just upped the pace a little bit and uh, Sam Eggington he didn't cope with it, didn't go with it. It was a better round for Molina, but this is a positive start again from Eggington. Couple of big shots going, landing with the right hand there. There's a good right hand to the body, and then a left hook from Eggington lands as well. Just sparked into life again there, Sam Eggington. Yeah, the reactions have just quickened up a little bit. Oh, great right shot from Eggington! Molina off balance and Molina cornered for a moment there, he needs all his ring smarts here Molina. Is Sam Eggington about to make a statement? Well, Steve Bunn spoke about Stephen McKenna having a nasty streak and Eggington in this round he's come out firing on all cylinders, he's quickened those reactions up hasn't he? And caught Molina with a couple of belting shots. Well, he might have switched off a bit in round two, but he's been bang on it here. Remember, Molina never stopped in his long career. People might laugh at Sam Eggington having world ambitions, but he's looking like he belongs here against a a former force in the shape of Melina. You can't afford to hold your feet too long against Melina. You can't afford to admire your work with him. Once you've landed a couple of shots, you've got to move, move off to the side. If you stay there, then he comes back with something. He's a world-class fighter, remember. And at world level, that's what they do. That they, you know, they, they, they punch back very quickly. And if you're standing there, you get caught. Yeah, having to trapped in the corner. Molina has pride and pedigree, and he will not go easily here. But it's been an excellent round this from Eggington. I think he's hurt Molina there, Dave. A couple of times. Well, Molina looking relaxed on his way back to the corner, but I think there's a bit of kidology going on there. That was a great round for Sam Eggington. Really turned it on at the end there. They come up for the time and he just quickened the reactions up, so Molina throws a, a, a slower jab, but it was Eggington's reaction, really sharp. Fast right-hand counter, perfectly timed punch. And that set the ball rolling, didn't it? And then he just kept it going then. There's that jab, misses the target. Great counter punch there from Sam Eggington. Good round for him. But Molina's always in it. But this is when I think he just got hurt towards the end of the round. Great finish from Eggington. Second out, round four. Eggington quickly off his stool, the beginning of round four. Molina just a little slower to move into the centre of the ring. Definitely hurt in that third round by Eggington. That's the shot Eggington's got to watch out for, Dave. That left up for Molina, he just threw it there. That was a superb jab by Eggington, but he's just got to watch out for the left hook. He's got to keep his right hand nice and high and don't hold the feet, like I said before, after you've landed shots. He comes back with the left hook. And 
there is a vulnerability, remember, about Sam Eggington. We saw it against Joaquinho. We saw it against Liam Smith as well. He can unravel, and that's what Molina is banking on, some of his quality. That's good for Megginton, straight, one, two. See Molina struggles with the straight shots, he's too far out. Eggington's measuring the distance very well. And when Molina closes the gap, it's the bent arm shots, the hooks that are his danger punches. Just a word about the arena here in Coventry. All the way through lockdown, we were being entertained by the excellent work of Matt Christie and his team at Boxing News and various podcasts, including Steve's with uh, Mike Costello. But we missed the real thing in front of a crowd, and it feels so emotional, really, to have it back. I know we keep looking up, uh, starry-eyed almost, and enjoying every moment of this. How we took it for granted. A year, a year and so ago, Dave, you know, arena's full. But yeah, it's fantastic having people back watching boxing. Yeah, you're right. Sitting at home and dreaming of Sam Eddington in Coventry. But that's what we were doing. And here he is. Quiet around for both boxers, but I think um, Eggington's controlled this very well. He's boxed at range for most of this contest, and that's where Molina struggled. He can't get to Eggington. And when those punches are straight, that, that's good work again from Eggington there. Molina testing Eggington to the body. Yeah, he's got to move off those ropes, doesn't need to be sitting there. Molina still in there at the end of round four. What to expect from him we the big question mark over this fight was his conditioning how much he had left how much he still wanted it for all that he said he did we haven't necessarily had that answered but we can see that his quality is still there yeah his quality is definitely still there though he's a very experienced man but up to now i think sam eggington is boxing very well indeed Round five, Sam Eggington against Carlos Molina. We don't really care too much about the belt here. It's about what it might mean going forward in terms of a world ranking for, for Sam Eggington. At some stage, Dave, we may see a change in tactic here from, from Molina because he's been outboxed at range. And um, he, he may find that he's got to get closer to Eggington, so he might go on that front foot. But at the moment, I think Eggington, in that last round, it was, it was a quieter round, but I thought he controlled it very well behind that lead hand, especially. And uh, like I said, Molina, a very experienced man, remember. He won't want to be outboxed, so he'll get up to Eggington. This is someone, remember, with wins over Kermit Sintron, Isha Smith, when he won the title, Corey Spinks as well. It's a serious operator in his time. It's just that that sense that his time has gone He's trying to roll back the years here and make himself remain relevant he certainly talked a good game all week chicago based the mexican molina been fighting back in Mexico, five of his last eight have been in his hometown of Pascuaro. Just occasionally, Dave, he gets close enough to land that single left hook. We spoke about it earlier. 
Washington's got to watch out for that. Those low hands of Molina means he wants Egerton to come forward, wants him to throw a punch. He's waiting to throw the counter. That's better from Egerton. When Molina is waiting to counter, Egerton just keeps working, then he's nicking the round, isn't he? That's another thing that's worth remembering, being clever enough to, to make sure of these rounds. Maybe he's been guilty of not doing that in the past. Right hand around the ear there from Eggington. There's that left hook from Molina, but good work from Eggington as well. Yeah, there's a good right hand from Molina as well. But Eggington, he's seizing his chance, he's caught him with a good shot. I think he realises that Molina's trying to slow the pace down. And Eggington there just jumped on him. <laughs> Molina is trying every trick. He's celebrating at the end of the round to try and convince the judges. He hasn't convinced me in that round. I thought it was another Eggington round, to be quite honest. I don't think he's convinced anyone, but he's trying. So I think he's, he's opting for a slower paced contest. There's John Pegg and Sam Eddington. Yeah, Johnny Pegg in the corner, he'll be pleased. So round six. Good start this from Sam Eggington and for all his misfortune on the scorecards over the years, he surely must be ahead here. Certainly be surprised if he wasn't. Eggington's aware that Molina's trying to set traps for him here. Well, he's setting traps and slowing the pace down. That's what he's doing, Molina. And trying to catch him with the odd single shot here and there, either the right hand or the left up. He's clever. He really is. Occasionally, though, he gets he gets caught in his own trap because he's he's keeping those hands low because he wants Eggington to punch. But sometimes Eggington's lead hand's very quick and he, he, he's hitting him. Just hitting the target. Nice bit of basic work there from Eggington. And Eggington's just got to concentrate on that jab. Fast, sharp, accurate, and just keep the man at distance. If you're allowed to get close, then, you know, he's dangerous. Molina's a fighter. He's always been known for his work rate. But he's taking his age into consideration here and he's fighting in a different way, trying to use every bit of his boxing IQ, his ring smarts, however you want to describe it. That's a good jab there from yeah. Eggington. Tremendous shot. Basic shot from Eggington and again. Oh, good punch from Molina there as well, Dave. Just shows Eggington that he's still there. That was a belter. Yeah, he still has that quality, that timing, and that accuracy. You can see the experience of Molina, though. Tremendous the way he slowed things down. He's making Eggington think. Better from Molina. Yeah, trying to discourage Eggington and trying to get on the front foot himself. He yeah. hasn't been there too often. Cut around for Molina. Good to know. Like I say, Eggington's just 
took his eye off the ball slightly. And uh, his work rate has just lowered in this round. And that work rate, as well as uh, his quality, is the, is the key to the fight, really, against Molina, his fitness and his work rate. Well, fascinating stuff here as Sam Eggington goes in search of a world ranking to open the door to what he hopes will be a, a glorious second half of his career. Carlos Molina continues to rage against the dying of the light. Three days from his 38th birthday. How have you got it, Richie? I've got it four rounds to two to Eggington. I thought uh, Megginton's work rate just dipped in that last round and I thought that um, Molina took it for me. So yeah, he's a clever man, experience, slowed it down, which has suited him. I think Egginton has got to up the tempo a little bit, go through the gears and really put this fella under a lot of pressure, but do it at range behind the straight shots and then move in. But he's certainly got to up the tempo. Steve Bunce put it perfectly in the, in the build-up to this defeat for Molina and that's the end of him really as any kind of significant force. A defeat for Eggington sets him back seriously. He's only 27 but he's been in a lot of fights. This number 37 He's on the, the front foot both tonight and in his career but if he were to lose this, wow, feel like a long way back. He's much on the line for both of these men. Yeah, neither neither of them can afford to lose here Dave let's get it right you know Molina another world title shot that will have gone and he'll lose the, that WBC ranking in the top 10 and for Sam Eggington this is a, a massive step in his career he can really put on, be put onto the world stage if he can take that world ranking from Molina not quite sure how he got that WBC ranking in the top 10, but we'll leave that to one side. Yeah. A couple of wins at the end of last year against useful opponents in decent enough form. It's just always hard to know too much about the level of the opposition. Those uh, hometown fights in Mexico. Yeah, and during the pandemic, he's boxed in, in 2020, Dave, he boxed six times. So he's kept busy when other boxers obviously haven't. In that same period, Sam Eggington's only boxed twice. You know, he's fought six times and he's had six victories. So, yeah, he's got that WBC ranking. Close round this round seven. Work rate right here from Eggington. Melina miss a bit there. Yeah, Melina just showing a bit of frustration, wants him to come forward. Eggington's doing the right thing, throwing lots of punches, but I'd like to see them straight so there's a bit of a gap between himself and Melina. Left hook there from Melina was a good shot. What Eggington does not want is this to turn into a scrappy oh. fight. That was a good shot, Dave. Good left hook from Eggington. The end of the round, probably enough to win Sam Eggington the round as well. Maybe to discourage Melina
Well, is Sam Eddington starting to get on top here? It's a great finish to that round. Second down, round eight. Box of tricks, Carlos Molina. Eddington clearly in front. And looking to cement that with a strong finish to the fight. Slight change in tactic from the at the start of this round, Dave. Hands a little bit higher, coming forward on that front foot. Probably been told that he's behind and he's got to get up closer to Eggington. But if that's uh, the tactic, got to move the head a little bit more. Avoid the shot from Eggington on the way in. That's a lovely jab again, Eggington. Yeah, that's nice. Excellent work from Eddington, straight right hand that time, really explosive punch. Yeah, just simple straight right and, and, and left hands. When you're hitting the target, it means there's a big gap between yourself and your opponent. And that's what Molina has struggled with throughout this. He needs to be closer. He's more dangerous with the bent arm work. But when Eggington gets that timing right, the accuracy, and he's just keeping him on the end of that jab and straight right hand. Molina is still dangerous, but Eggington looks dominant, there's another really good jab, great accuracy, judgment of distance as well. When you're in against a world-class fighter like Molina, Dave, you've got to concentrate every second of every round. Boxing well, he just took his off the ball here now, Eggington, just drifted into a corner and that's just allowed Molina to get the better of him there that exchange can't afford to make those mistakes real battle of wills in there now Good right hand from Eggington, great combination there, and then the right to the body is a, a clever punch, just sagged the legs of Molina, goodness me, he's tough though, the Mexican. And this is where Eggington's just got to watch what he's doing, he's landing good shots, but Molina never been stopped, remember Dave, hard as nails, typical Mexican, and can land shots on the inside, cracking scrap. Well, four rounds remain. Here's how Richie's got it. Yeah, I've got him three points up at this stage. That last round was a close round. Couldn't split them. But overall, Eggington, for me, is ahead. Of course, he's got such a, a fear of any fight that goes to the judges, Sam Eggington, that he'll know, and he'll start to believe anyway, that he's not going to get rid of this fella. He's so tough, Molina. Needs to keep racking up the rounds. That's it, Dave. Yeah, rely on your fitness. He's trained very hard for this, Sam Eggington. He's kept, he's kept, he's kept going. Going. Saw him spar and said he was too good to be a journeyman. Went on to British Commonwealth European honours. John Peck proved right and now trying at the age of 27 to go up another level. Yeah. 
Oh, lovely shot there from Eglinton. That was a lovely short right hand. Waiting for Malin to come in. Timed it very well indeed. Again, Molina trying to get on the front foot, again aware that he needs to do more here. He's doing well as well, Dave, up to now. The good double jab right hand, but Eggington again puts him back onto the ropes. Clever boxer, Molina. Picks his shots very well. And he recognises when Eggington just slows down for a second. He just stops the tempo. Well, there were quite a few cynics who felt that Molina was just here for a bit of a payday and had talked himself up, but he's still got plenty of that quality, all right. He's not the fighter he was, but still impressive and still so durable. Coming forward, but Eggington landing with a good shots there, but that's better for Molina. Again, Eggington just switching off, drifting back onto the ropes, gets caught. Close, close round, and then Eggington comes back. Belting right on. He's done that a few times, just when Molina's getting on top. He's found a shot like that, but it's good pressure again for Molina. 12 knockouts on his record. He doesn't have prohibitive power, but... He's stinging his shots, Molina, certainly. Final 10 seconds of round nine. Three to go after this. Another mini rally here from Molina. Is it enough, though? Carlos Benina lost on points against Josh Kelly in Cardiff over 10 rounds three years ago. Losing here against Sam Eggington, but he's giving a good account of himself. Yeah, I thought he boxed well in that last round, did um, Molina. Here we see Eggington landing with a good jab. I thought Molina just nicked that last round. And for me, he's probably just closing the gap a little bit, but Eggington is still in front. So championship rounds. Sam Eddington, 6 and 4 in 12 round fights, 10 times he's gone the distance, Molina, 6 times. Eddington has 4 stoppages as well in the second half of 12 round fights. He, he's a fit man and keeps his strength, keeps his power. Let's put there from Eddington. Molina knows he's behind and he's trying to be busy here. Yeah, but Eggington is matching him here for work rate. It's pretty impressive stuff. Although he's holding his feet, he's taking the shots from Molina. His guard's pretty good. His hands are high, his elbows are tucked in, so he's, he's taking a lot of these shots on the arms and elbows, Sam Eggington. And he's matching Molina for work rate here. So yeah, and actually that was lovely there from Eggington. Several times he's forced Molina to take backward steps here. Combinations are going in from Sam Eggington, it's not singles. Two or three shots went in there. And yeah, he's just up the tempo here, Eggington. 
And just single shots from Molina. Molina is just starting to tire here. It's a little bit flat footed in this round 10, but still carries a threat. Good work again from Eddington. Big shots going in downstairs, then he switches with that left up to the head. Molina definitely felt those. And Eggington knows it, he's got him back again in that corner. Yeah, he knows that he scored there with some big shots. Every time though that Molina's legs seem to sag and you think he's in trouble, he just finds that second win and comes back and he's landed some good shots. There's another left hook from Molina. Still dangerous. Eggington got to keep the right hand eye to block that left hook. Trying to rebuild his career, get some ranking back. He's achieved that, but at the moment, Sam Eggington is going to grab it off him. Good work there from Eggington, switching the attack from body to head. Here, just waiting, but then whipping that right up a good downstairs. Gets caught himself. Molina still dangerous, especially with the hooks. Right hand, there's the left up coming up there. It was there. Round 11. Penultimate round then. Richie's got Eddington by two. Two rounds remaining. I wonder how you're scoring it at home. I got Eddington by three. This is his history with judges, given what he thinks of them, he won't feel comfortable, he'll feel he has to win these last two rounds and that's not a bad place psychologically to be. Yeah, well not only that, what he's got to do here now is just concentrate now for six minutes. In this type of, he's tired, they're both tired, but you've got to concentrate, you're in against a world-class boxer. It's all about not only the physical battle, but the mental battle also, right to the very end. Sam Eggington's got to keep the concentration going right the way to the last belt. <laughs> Footwork there from Eggington. No knockdown. Ian John Lewis straight away. Just a slip from Molina. <laughs> no hands from Eggington. Once. Molina to come forward, just judging that range and then that fast jab goes out and gets caught with the right hand there, good work for Molina. And of course Molina was tiring and I think he clearly was, the fact that the finishing line is within sight will encourage him. Good boxing fair for Megginson, he's actually counter-attacking, he's waiting for Molina to, to throw the shot and he's beating him to the punch. to get off those ropes. Loves the fight, Eddington, and sometimes it's been his undoing. Yeah, I mean, we, we know Molina's top. All the Mexican fighters are, but give credit to Sam Eddington. Good boxer and a tough, tough man indeed. Yeah, there was that moment in that Ted Cheeseman fight, that grueling fight, that terrific fight, and Eggington was caught smiling. He was enjoying it, he loves the scrap. Seen that Look again that. tonight. Excellent boxing again for Eggington there, just beating Molina to the punch there. Thank <laughs> you. 
More good work from Melina. Take a look at that moment when Molina went to the canvas. Well, it was a body shot went in, but I think it was it was a slip. So the referee has said anyway. It was the body shot, or it was a cuffing punch, if anything. Not definitive that replay, but we'll leave that behind us. Corners, ten seconds. They've both given everything. Eggington is surely ahead here. Molina will risk everything in this final round. Yeah, we may see Molina just go for it now, Dave. He must know he's behind. He's an experienced man. The corner will be telling him also that he's behind. He might just throw everything at Sam Eggington. So he's got to concentrate, like I said before. Keep the punches nice and straight. Keep the hands high after he's punched. Move your feet. Just do the basics and get off the ropes. He's had a great career, Molina. This might be the final relevant round of it. He might as well throw caution to the wind. And that's what he's trying to do. Oh, good right hand there for Molina. Eggington's got to watch that. That right hand over the top. He's getting closer and closer to him. Molina is. Now, Eggington has to be aware of the danger here. In situations like this is where you've got to keep your punches straight. Concentrate on distance, just allowing Molina in there, closing that gap down. Good attack there for Molina. Just unloading punches there on Eggington, whose punch resistance is excellent. Left to the body from Molina, but Eggington took that on the gloves. The left hook. Rave effort this from Carlos Molina. Oh, lovely little short left up there from Eggington. Taking a lot of risks he was on those ropes, but he's off the ropes now. Gets caught again. Cracking contest this. It's a good shot right from Molina, wasn't it? From Molina over the top. Final minute of what's been a really entertaining fight. One in which Sam Eggington has surely done enough, but Molina's reputation has grown, certainly at the end of his career. Not the fighter he was, but there's still plenty of fight in him. Yeah, very decent fighter indeed. Carlos Molina. Going 12 rounds at this pace. Pushing Eggerton back now onto the ropes in the final round. Giving it everything here. Now Molina really going for it. Molina trying to tee off here on Eggington. But Eggington still offering something back. Molina's final round. But has he done enough? Surely not. They fight right until the final bell. We have a crowd here and now they're going to get to their feet. But these two fighters who both put everything on the line. There's the embrace. What a final round that was from Molina. Throwing everything at Eggington but surely not enough. Terrific fight Richie. Yeah, and tremendous. Sam Eggington has just prevailed we think. Tre yeah, tremendous contest. For me he's got over the line by maybe one, uh, a couple of rounds Sam Eggington. But Molina there just shows you what, you know, he's been a world champion, showed his quality there in that last round, knew he was behind and just kept it going and went for it, he went for the win. So fair play to him, pinned Sam Eggington onto the ropes, right hand over the top was a great shot and sustained the pressure, kept it going. Eggington never really in trouble but at the end of the day, you know, you're taking risks by being on those ropes and Molina, yeah, he, he really 
had a good very good last round indeed these are the last few seconds of the contest but yeah it was a crack it really was and one that for me sam eggington has won i'm going to go to the judges then richie how have you got it at the I'm, end of the 12 rounds i've got eggington by two and that's nice respect between the two so richie has eggington by two eggington will surely feel that he's won i'm sure most of you at home will have it the same way possibly even by wider but we'll see eggington will still be nervous i promise you after what he feels has happened to him in the past and the longer it takes Sometimes you yeah, add up right. the closer it is. I can see Paul Booth over there with uh, our judges. Of course, COVID times slow things up a little bit. Yeah, of course. Sam Eggington there. A fighter knows when he's won a contest. And look at Sam Eggington. You know, he, he very confident in his corner and the hug, smiling. At the end of the contest, yeah, you know if you've won, a, if you've won the fight. And uh, Sam Eggington, for me, clearly feels feels that John Pegg there in the corner done a fantastic job in conditioning Sam Eggington he was ready for this contest and boxed a very good fight indeed well I can see that Paul Booth is uh, up on his podium we wait for Molina to get the gloves off Ian John Lewis wants to call them in and uh, he's little last moments of delay problem is you see when it takes that long they start to take the gloves off don't they and it just uh, adds to the agony but surely this is going to be confirmation for Sam Eggington but he'll be much happier once he knows rather than just believes Ian John Lewis is saying come on and uh, Paul Booth is still Waiting in the spotlight, Eggington's ready. This is great, isn't it? Live on terrestrial telly, we've got two fighters taking gloves off for a minute. Anyway, I've seen worse over the years. They, a call to the middle, and now we can get to our MC Paul Boo. After 12 rounds of middleweight boxing, we go to the judges at ringside. George Gigo Cavallari has the contest 116-112. Fabian Guggenheim has the bout at 119-109. And John Latham scores the contest at 117-111. All three judges score in favour of our winner by unanimous decision. From Birmingham, England! The new WBC silver middleweight champion, the savage Sam Eggington. So Sam Eggington marches on and now he'll march on at world level.